Hey everybody, um, this is going to be another Visual Basic lesson, and um, in this one we're going, well I'm going to show you how to make a, uh, what's called a game loop, and that's basically the code that controls, like, the frame rate and all the timing events, it's the main loop of a game. Um, no, we're not actually going to make a game today, but this is uh, a part of a game that you need to know how to make if you want to ever make a game. It's one of the most important parts, so... Yeah, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So we've got our form here, we're going to go ahead and open up the code, and um, I'm just going to tell you uh, to type the whole thing out, I'm going to tell you the code, and then after we have it all typed, I'll explain to you how it works, because that'll be a little easier for me. I don't know, it's just this code is kind of kind of funky, kind of confusing, so it should be a little bit easier to understand after we have it all typed. So. First off, we need to uh, declare a couple variables, and we're going to start with dim be running as boolean. Next, we're going to do dim max fps as long, and dim delay as long, dim st as long, dim et as long, um, dim CLKS, which stands for clicks, as long. Dim ET1, as long. Dim ET2, as long. And I think that's all the variables we need for now. So, the next thing uh, we're going to do is type form1.show. And just leave that as it is for now. Uh, we need to do one more thing before we go any further, or else, well, it's not going to make sense until I explain it anyway, but you should do this now. Um, you're going to go ahead and add a module, so you got your blank module over here. <coughs> and the next thing you should do is go to Start, Programs, uh, Visual Basic 6, and uh, Visual Basic 6.0 Tools, and go to the API Text Viewer. And once you get that open, go to Load Text File in the File menu and click on Win32 API. It'll automatically open this folder. You don't need to worry about where it is. So once you get that open, type in Get Tick. And uh, the one we're looking for is Get Tick Count, which comes up when you search for that. And just go ahead and take the stuff it spits out in the bottom and hit Copy. Now you can close this because we don't need this program anymore. Go ahead and control V and paste that into your module. I'm not really going to explain to you like how this little bit of code works. You just need to know that it's a function and it lets you get a value from the system. And I'll explain to you what exactly it is in a little bit. But for now, just paste that code in there and uh, let's continue with this bit. So after form one uh, dot show, we need to type max fps equals 100. Next, we need to do delay equals uh, 1000 divided by max FPS. And then after that, we do be running equals true since um, our game loop is going to run as long as be running equals true. So, <coughs> next up is uh, st equals get tick count. And then after that, you want et equals st plus delay. So, and now that you got all that typed, after these two lines of code is where our actual loop is going to start. It's going to be a do while loop, and we're just going to use be running as uh, our little condition there. So as long as be running is true, then this loop will cycle through. Gonna do if get tick count is greater than or equal to et then go down a bit st equals get tick count et equals um, st plus delay and then after that you want clks or clicks equals um, clks plus one, so we're going to add one to that there. <coughs> now, um, this next little part, 
you don't really need to put, but um, we're going to put it here just so you know. Uh, game code starts here. This is a comment which you use a uh, single apostrophe as your comment marker. Uh, game code stops here. So, um, your game code is going to go in between these two comments. Any code that actually pertains to the game, any timing events or subs or whatever you want to put there, actually goes there and nowhere else in the loop. So, <coughs> after you got that, and we are going to go below that last comment and type if get to count is uh, greater than or equal to et1, then st1 equals get tick count and et1 equals st1 I think plus 1000 yep that's right so we're going to go ahead and scroll down and go back over here I guess then under that we're going to type form1 dot caption equals um, apostrophes fps colon space apostrophes and symbol clks Enter and then CLKS equals zero. And if for uh, this little if statement, and then we go ahead down and we're gonna end if again to end the statement before that. And then you're gonna type do events and then loop at the bottom. So this is our uh, loop code. So now that we've got it all typed and you can look at it you can probably figure out how it works yourself if you feel like it but if not I'll explain it to you um, after we declare all the variables we start here with form1.show we need to do that because sometimes if you enter into an intensive loop right away Visual Basic won't show the form and if you're writing a game you obviously want your form to show up um, next is the max FPS we're gonna set our max frame rate which uh, there's some little bits I need to talk about about that in a minute, but it's not important right now to know how this works. Um, next is delay. The delay is the amount of time in milliseconds between each frame. So if our max frame rate is 100 frames per second and there's 1,000 milliseconds in a second, uh, we divide 1,000 by our max frame rate to get 10 milliseconds between each frame. And the next we obviously just said we're running equals true so that the loop works. After that we get to st equals get tick count. Um, now this is used to uh, ah crap. This is used to control the timing of the loop and I'll explain how it works as we go down. Uh, get tick count I that's what we posted in the module. Basically when you use it in code it's technically a function, but when you use it in code, it acts like a variable. So, get to count is a, a number that, whenever you start your computer, it starts from zero and starts counting up. It counts um, every millisecond that your computer has been turned on for. So, every second that your computer is on, 1,000 gets added to this number, and obviously it's added one at a time. So, for every millisecond, the count goes up by one. And what this lets us do is it lets us time things down to a thousandth of a second, since we can can, can time things down to one millisecond. And uh, that's needed when you're doing a game that requires like accurate timing and stuff. <coughs> so we can go on to the next line. Um, the ST is basically when... Uh, this is going to sound confusing, but it's when the previous frame ends and then ET is when the next frame should begin. So the time between ST and ET, which is ST plus delay, so it's going to be 10, sec 10 milliseconds after ST. Uh, there's going to be nothing going on between those, between those two positions in time during that 10 milliseconds. When we go down to our loop, we get to this little bit here that says uh, if get tick count is greater than ET. So that basically says if time has passed, if more than 10 milliseconds have passed to get to where the next frame should begin, then we're going to go ahead and start that frame. So that goes into this code down here. And this little bit of code right here basically says 
you know, after this frame has started, it does the same thing that this did up here, and it sets the timing up for the next frame. So this is when this frame is like going on or ending, and then ET is when the next frame should begin, 10 milliseconds from whenever this gets executed. And um, we go on down, and CLKS is, uh, I called it clicks, I don't know why I just chose that word, but um, that's basically the frame counter. One gets added to that every time this loop goes through, and each time this loop goes through, your game executes one frame. So, yeah. Uh, so one gets added to that for every frame we go through, and that lets us count our frames per second. Now, like I said, all your game code goes here, and I'll give you an example of how you would use this. You would obviously want to be more organized than I'm going to be, but I'm just going to give an example. <coughs> but for now, we're going to leave that alone. So, this, uh, this little bit up here, that is the actual game loop code. This bit down here is only used for keeping track of our frame rate. We don't actually need this bit. You could get rid of it and the game would still work fine, but you would have no way of knowing how many frames per second your game is working at. So, this works on a uh, similar principle as the one above. And it says, if get to count is greater than or equal to ET1, which is different from the regular ET, um, then it's going to do the whole setting up, figuring out when this little bit should be executing and when it should not be. Uh, this code here actually gets executed only once a second because the ending tick is 1000 milliseconds between ST and ET. So whenever this gets executed, which is once every thousand milliseconds, or yeah, once every thousand milliseconds, which is one second, uh, it posts our frames per second on the form one dot caption, which is the clicks, and that, and like I explained, the clicks adds one for every frame we go through, and then after that, it sets the clicks back to zero so that we get a fresh counter and we can continue counting. And that's the that's the frame counting code there. And then after that, we go down to the bottom, and after the two things at just the outside section of our loop, we need to do events, because uh, what this call basically says, it lets Windows do other things while your loop is running. If you didn't have a do events in there, then this game loop would hog all of your processor time and make your stuff act really stupid and not work. So we need that in there. <coughs> and then obviously the loop starts over, and we get our whole um, game loop going again. I hope I didn't confuse you with my uh, terrible explanation. It's 5 o'clock in the morning, and I'm very tired. So as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to bed. But, um... So now I'll give you an example of how this works. We can go ahead and, uh... We can go ahead and run this. And you will see... At the top... It says 64 FPS. If you move it around, it freezes the loop. So, uh... The frame rate's obviously going to drop. And also, one of the things I wanted to explain to you is um, about the FPS. We set our max FPS to 100 up there, but it doesn't actually work at 100, and very rarely will it actually work at what you set it at, but that's not important. It doesn't need to work at exactly what you set it at. The thing that's important about having a, uh, a frames per second kind of thing going on is you need consistent timing on every computer that your game runs on. So whether we set this to run at 30 FPS or 300 FPS, it doesn't matter. It just needs to run at the same frame rate on every computer you run it on in order for your game to act the same on every computer. I'm sure you know what I mean. So, uh, we can go ahead and close that, and I need to show you one thing about that, so you can actually click the X button. Um, we need to go to no, wait, no, form, and uh, unload, so we're going to make a sub there, and just type end in your form unload code, which you get from going up here and going down to that. And that'll let you click the X button, and it'll kill the loop, because otherwise it doesn't kill the loop, it keeps going, and your programming, your program will just run in the background. Anyway, back to what I was going to say. The max FPS uh, won't actually run, usually, at whatever you set it at, 
but um, you just play with it until you get a frame rate that you like. 64 works at 40, and uh, 32 should work at 32. Uh, yep, it does. So um, you just play with that until you get a frame rate you want, and then no matter what it's set at, it will run at the same frame rate on whatever computer you throw this program on. So now that we've got that done, I can go ahead and give you an example of this looping. Um, I'm going to set this back up to 100 so that it runs at 64 frames per second. Um, so we're going to put on a label here, and then we're going to go back to our uh, our game loop code, and we're going to go up here to the top, and we're going to declare ourselves a little variable, and we're just going to call this label value as long, dim label value as long and label value equals 1. We're just going to set that to 1 before the loop starts and that's all we need up there. Now all this is going to do is every frame it's just going to add 1 to the label code or the label value and uh, then it's going to update the label on the form and you can see it counting up constantly very quickly. So we're going to do label value equals label value plus 1 so one gets added to it every frame, and then label one dot caption equals label value. So we can go ahead to our uh, run the program, and as you can see, our label is counting up very, very quickly. It probably doesn't look very quick because I'm only recording at like three frames a second, but if you run it on your computer, you'll be able to see that it's counting up very, very quickly, uh, approximately well, not for approximately, exactly 64 counts per second. And so that's basically how that works. Um, and that's really all there is to talk about right now. Uh, that's your game loop code, and I'll probably do another lesson soon that shows how to actually use this in a sort of game kind of thing. I'm just going to play, I'm going to show you how to do something cool with it. So, uh, that's all for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed, learned something, and I hope it didn't confuse the hell out of you. So, uh, see you later.